Today is Thursday. This presumably would have been Canon Hinnant's fourth day of kindergarten. His first day was supposed to be on Monday, but Canon didn't get to experience his first day of kindergarten, and he won't get to experience his first day of first grade, and he won't get to go shopping with his mother for school supplies and watch regretfully as every year his list becomes filled with less colored pencils and crayons and more notebooks and binders because he actually won't get to do any of the things that we all enjoyed growing up because he had his life stolen by this man Darius Sessoms because he supposedly biked on the man's lawn by accident. And so Darius Sessoms approached five-year-old Cannon while he was playing outside with his sisters and he executed him. He shot this five-year-old boy in the head point blank and the media are silent. If you try to find this story online, uh, you're only gonna find it from like local sources, a few conservative publications maybe, but the mainstream media are dead silence about this story. And one of the saddest things that I read pertaining to this story was from the cousin of the boy's mother who said, he will never be forgotten. And I believe that she believes that, I truly do. But the reality is that Cannon will be forgotten soon. I mean, some of us might make a point to remember him, but the reality is that two weeks from now, no one's gonna be talking about this story. But two weeks from now, two months from now, we will all still be talking about George Floyd. St. Floyd of Minneapolis, two years, two decades from now, our children will have to memorize that name for American history exams. And we know why that is, but to the average person that might seem a bit strange, but they probably won't question it because people are not actually individuals. That's my favorite shit lib assumption. We all know some liberal whose entire personality is just, um, excuse me, are you registered to vote? Um, are you registered? Oh, if only more people voted. If only more people, then everything would be fine. The problem isn't more democracy, it's, it's less democracy. We really need all the people who haven't been interested or intelligent enough to take two minutes to register to vote. We really need them calling the shots. Most people do not think about things. Most people do not have agency. They do not possess the internal monologue. They basically respond to stimuli and group conformity and then default to pursuing food, sex, and leisure. And the reason I bring this up is because the fact that there is not national outrage about this in isolation, let's not even compare it to George Floyd for a second. The fact that this in itself is not getting people demanding media coverage for this story, it vindicates so much about what we talk about. Like if a five-year-old white boy can be executed in his front lawn in front of his sisters and the media won't cover it because the murderer was a black man and as a result no one in this country cares, how do you ever expect to gain any ground? I mean, we have no cultural power in this country, but conservatives think that we're winning because, oh, Trump's in office and the other day he totally owned this stupid liberal reporter. Cry more leftists. Hold, hold on. Let me drink some leftist tears. Would you like to know what that is? That is a cope of astronomical proportions. They are so overwhelmingly in charge of the narratives in this country, and as a result, what everyone thinks in this country, that a case like this is completely ignored, specifically because it was a black man murdering a young white boy, a child. And so when the silent majority disappears as our older generations leave us and the generations replacing them are being indoctrinated by these narratives from infancy throughout their lives, and they're now the majority of the electorate, what then? It's over then. We will have the ultimate illusion of choice. You know, sure, we're all going to get to cast our vote because everyone's voice counts and, and we all get to pick where we get our information from because it's a citizen's duty to be informed, but it won't matter. It will be a one-party state. You will have the Democratic Socialists and you will have the Liberal Republicans who will appear to be right-wing by comparison. The point is that winning elections isn't enough. We have to actually take control of the culture. It is the only way. Otherwise, our window to win elections is only going to be open for about 10 more years. If a story is unbelievably evil and shocking as this can't get covered because to do so would jeopardize the narrative, you can forget just begging for a diversity of thought because they don't care. And they probably would have cared at least a little bit if the murderer were a white guy. Like, hey, look at this. Look, this was really sad. And then people would be like, wow, white people are the worst. What else is new? But to even acknowledge that black people do things like this, just like white people, and actually even more than white people, would undermine the narrative that black people are the eternal victims in society at the hands of white people who are the eternal oppressors. That's what this is about. This is about preserving the Black Lives Matter narrative. This is about keeping the spotlight and national conversation on George Floyd. But let's compare these cases. I think it's fair to say that things can be tragic and, and things can be more tragic than other things, and particularly with deaths. I think a lot of that is weighted on who the person is, what their character was like, and also the circumstances surrounding their death. And so with George Floyd, we're told by the supposedly reasonable people that, you know, even if he's not the angel that he's being purported to be, the circumstances of the death are still tragic. It's like, okay. Were they more tragic than being executed at point blank range in front of your sisters at five years old? No, no, they weren't. But what about the people? Okay, well, one was a perfectly happy, wonderful five-year-old boy who probably would avoid stepping on a ladybug if it were in his path. And the other was a middle-aged, degenerate, drug-addicted criminal who robbed pregnant women at gunpoint and elected to point the weapon at their in utero child and who also starred in amateur pornography. Now, judging by the national outrage, judging by the cities that were burned, you would think 
you would think that George Floyd's death was more tragic. But after breaking it down, I think it's safe to say that Cannon Hinnant's death is more of a tragedy than George Floyd's death. Cannon Hinnant is more of a tragedy than George Floyd. Cannon Hinnant is more of a tragedy than George Floyd. Send me an email if you want to see my math. They painted murals and leveled cities for George Floyd, gave his family $15 million, and they can't even give Cannon Hinnant a 500-word eulogy? Oh, he's going to cut you down. He's going to cut you down. These people are evil. They don't view human life as universally valuable. They don't even view children that way. Look at their attitudes towards abortion or even infanticide with the more honest ones. The way that they regard life is of conditional value. And maybe with abortion, they'll employ arbitrary metrics like sentience or viability. But it just so happens that in this particular case, the conditions that have to be met are whether that person is useful to the narrative. And this five-year-old boy wasn't. So who cares about him? And his death actually even harms the narrative because it suggests that black people aren't just always the victims and that sometimes they actually do pretty evil things. And so this story had to be completely swept under the rug. This was not a coincidence. These people communicate. They have editorial meetings and they have official decisions to blacklist categorically stories like this because reporting on them and providing truth to the American people would undermine their manufactured narrative. So... When they say black lives matter, uh, they don't just mean that black lives matter. Like, of course, black lives matter. No one disputes that. What they really mean is that black lives matter because they are black. White lives don't matter simply because they are white. And unless they can be used to propel the narrative, they don't matter at all. That's the message. That's the most tragic thing about this whole thing. That Canon Hinnant doesn't get to be remembered. He won't get a mural because he is white and because his death is inconvenient to the current narratives. And I've been very careful here because, you know, I don't want people to take what I'm saying in a negative or a hateful way because it's not intended to be that way. But I have to ask, how is your day going to change today because of this? Like, how much longer are we going to read about things like this and just go, hmm, that's a shame, and then do nothing about it? Like, where's our outrage? Why don't we flood the streets surrounding the headquarters of these propagandists and demand that they submit to our narrative, which used to go by simply the truth? But I'm not advocating for anything like that. I would never encourage unlicensed demonstrations because not only could that get me kicked off YouTube, it's just, it's just plain wrong. You know, if this were Black Lives Matter, they'd probably walk into the offices of the places suppressing this story and wreak havoc. But again, we're not them. We don't want to be like them. We don't want to be off-putting. We don't want to be destructive. We don't want to be effective. So don't do that. It's all a joke. I disavow that. But what you can do is you can donate to the family. There uh, were a few fake GoFundMe set up initially, but this is the one that's real um, as confirmed by all the local news outlets covering the story. So as of right now, it's raised about $132,000 for the family. And of course, money will never replace the child. But what it will do, even ignoring that money is always helpful for a family with children to feed, um, is that it will show them that there are people out there who are there for them. And if George Floyd's family can get $15 million, then they should be able to get some money as well, which will hopefully make this time a little bit easier for them. So please go donate to them. I donated $2,500 earlier today. And I don't say that to be like, oh, look at me. Look how virtuous I am. But I say that because you all know I don't make a lot of money doing YouTube. YouTube kind of doesn't like me, but it's still important that we prioritize what we're spending our money on. And I know that times are hard right now with the shutdown. So if you can't afford it, obviously you should prioritize the necessities of your family and yourself. But please, if you can uh, donate to his family, I'll put the link in the description and in the comments so you can, you know, donate. But, uh, this is a perfect example of a, an American family who is in need and they're going through an extraordinarily hard time right now, something that hopefully none of us will ever have to experience. But, you know, if we're not willing to help them out, if we're not willing to take that action, then what's the point of even trying to fix the country? Hey guys, if you like this video, leave it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, subscribe to the channel, uh, turn on notifications, share it with your friends, and please go donate to the family. Please go donate to the Hinnant family because uh, losing a child, especially in that manner is just unbelievable. And then to like watch the media just sweep it under the rug, like I, I can't even, Im I cannot even imagine, I cannot even imagine. Very sad, very sad. So anyways, thank you so much for watching and may God bless America. Poof.